I wasn't expecting people to want to come back to the office as little as they do. In terms of the survey, we were look, looking to capture um, a broader set of sentiments um, in terms of the UK business market than our customer end users and our, our own staffing in terms of um, how people um, were able to work uh, during COVID and then what were the business and lifestyle changes that had taken place beforehand. Um, so we really wanted to push that out to a broader audience so we could get good quality data that could help inform our strategic uh, options, but also be something that people would be interested to, to learn about. We had over 2,500 respondents from uh, UK formerly office workers, uh, now come home workers, and we wanted to learn how they adapted to the change. Every region of the United Kingdom was covered. Um, there was a a representative split between male and female. We had a, a wide variety of responses from many different sectors as well. I think what we were even surprised about is to the level um, people were having a more fulfilled life by having a much better work-life balance or, or work-life blend, as other people have said. Um, and I think, you know, come the key statistics from the survey, um, people are logging on with, when they would have started their commutes. So there's a big productivity in London that, you know, it's up to an hour a day. Um, they're logging off when they would have jumped back on the train. So that you know, they're picking up their families. They're, they're able to do different things that they couldn't. So, you know, they're, they're, there's, posit there's a, a five hours, you know, typical average productivity gain for a business. And there's a five hours back to the individual that, that's leading a better life at home. So, so, you know, people are finding better balance in their lives. I think what COVID has done is just made business realize that, um, you know, people are able and willing to work, um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be in, in the confines of one, one space. So I think culturally um, that, that will change forever. If it doesn't, it's a missed opportunity for a lot of organisations to increase their productivity. What we are finding is in terms of task-based work, and detail, reports, etc. Um, you know, back-to-back -back teams meetings, which I know everybody's getting a little bit of fatigue about at the moment. Um, a lot of people prefer to do that work from home. They look at Atlas as an organization. We've started bringing back the sales and marketing team on a Tuesday and Thursday, just so they can do more collaborative work together. But we also appreciate that there's also a lot of task-based work. So, you know, people are putting proposals together, putting bids together. Um, so people prefer not to come in the office on a Monday and a Friday. We're, we're quite happy to offer flexibility because um, in terms of the new strategy we've uh, gone forward with around Microsoft um, and being known for, for an expert in that position, we, we're able, we've been able to do about you know, 12 months worth of work in six months because of that flexibility and productivity. I do believe this is the start of a movement um, as the new normal around this hybrid working. So I think um, it was important for a lot of the participants to, to have a voice that it was broader than their organization um, and it, it was a it was a common movement globally that uh, people are seeking out more flexible employers and i think fundamentally that's going to transform the jobs market so territory and geography are going to be far less important as people seek uh, more remote uh, working methods I wasn't expecting people to want to come back to the office as little as they do. So I, I don't think, I think there was a very, very small sample that wanted to return to a Monday to Friday, nine to five. Um, I think a lot of people are, are somewhere between the one and three days in the office. From an organizational point of view, and I, I go on to be surprised by this, by the, the more uh, new customers that we're, we're in, in discussions with, um, is how ill-equipped organizations are from a security point of view. Um, you know, massive lack of awareness. I think one in 10 organizations had an awareness briefing. Um, people have been using their own laptops. There's company data all over the place. 
but I think on a real positive, a lot of organisations were able to enable home working. It's just were they able to do that securely and compliantly? I guess that's where I would see the challenge. We did ask how um, mental health had been impacted with the lockdown. Uh, specifically referenced how lack of social interaction had impacted that and to be honest I was expecting a higher proportion of people to say uh, it had negatively impacted their mental health I think it was around one in four one in five people said it had but you know that's still 20% of your workforce that have uh, negatively impacted their mental health because of lack of social interaction so that's definitely a learning We've been venture capital back since day one. Um, we wouldn't exist without it because, you know, in our earlier business model, we had to buy a load of kits, create the model, create the people, get an operating model, just get a business model. Um, and then we had to fund that capital growth to, to start. So fundamentally, we wouldn't exist without, without the need to bring in external finance. Um, I think in terms of the development capital we've received from Mercia, um, it was critical in terms of we've got a very ambitious plan um, to get to you know four times the size we currently are within a four to five year period, we need the capital to do that. We need you know to hire the best people we can afford. We've managed to bring in a senior team, and um, particularly around the sales element, we've we've got the best people we can afford on the market. And um, COVID has enabled us to get people from different parts um, of the UK. It's not all just been so. We are fully embracing the, the message that we're preaching, um, and I think you know a great thing for Mercia particularly is. We um, took investment, we took two million pounds in a business plan um, on the 28th of February. We had COVID-19 three weeks into March. We couldn't get our hardware in to deliver our plan. We paused, we pivoted our strategy, we supported that strategy. We brought in a new chairman, which has been you know, a good mentor for me. Um, and now you know, we're fully committed, fully focused on our new strategy. And that started to bear fruit uh, for us um, in August. So we started to to prove out what we've said. Um, but I think having a supporting investor that will listen to, and not say, well, this isn't the plan we invested in, right? Come through the new thought, tell us how we're gonna get there. Yes, we all believe the outcome's gonna be better in the long, we can build a bigger business, we can build a more profitable business. And I think that, that kind of support and ongoing rigor and challenge um, is real value. And I, I certainly value that going forward.